Welcome to Derivability. This is number five in a series of uh, videos on hyperbolic functions and how they're used in math. And you know, a lot, a lot of math uses, of course, uh, lend very directly into uh, applications of physics and engineering. Okay, so uh, here we're going to take a look at some integral substitutions of, of a couple different sorts. Okay, and again, they, they, all of them are going to remind you of, of things we can do with trig functions, except hyperbolic functions instead. Okay, so uh, maybe we are trying to integrate uh, the square of either the hyperbolic cosine function or the square of the hyperbolic sine function. Okay, you know, this, this might remind you of the difficulties you, you may have first encountered when you were trying to integrate sine squared or cosine squared with the with the regular trig functions. Okay. Well, our way out of this is to remember a couple of identities uh, that I have written down at the bottom uh, already. Uh, the, the last one is kind of our fundamental, uh, you might say, Pythagorean identity uh, for hyperbolic functions. The, the, the first one represents a sum of the same two things, cosh plus cinch, all right, and uh, the sum is actually a double angle identity or a double argument identity, if you like, for the cosh function. Okay, all right, so let's uh, just observe that if we take one half the sum of these two formulas, we're going to get cosh squared x equals one half cosh 2x plus 1. All right. Well, that very uh, uh, directly leads to uh, the, the sort of substitution that I have in mind for integrating cosh squared. Okay, we are uh, interested now in integrating 1 half cosh 2x plus 1 dx. Okay, uh, that 1 half comes out. All right, uh, we recall uh, again from some uh, earlier work that the antiderivative of cosh is cinch chain rule, uh, or kind of an anti-chain rule, says we get a one-half coming out there, one-half cinch 2x plus x. Okay, we can kind of clean this up, one-fourth cinch 2x plus one-half x. Okay, and plus c, the constant, okay, which I'm going to assume you you know all about, and you can include that as needed. Okay, we don't need to write that here. Okay, great. Now, what if we want to do it for cinch squared? Well, let's take one half the difference of these same two formulas. Okay, that is the top formula uh, minus the bottom one down here. And when we do that, we get cinch squared x equals one half cosh two x minus one. Okay. All right, so uh, these probably remind you of some uh, of, of some very similar uh, identities in trigonometry that we used to integrate here as well. So just finishing this one up real quick here, integral 1 half cosh 2x minus 1 dx. Okay, I don't think I need to do all the intermediate steps there. Okay, if you can do the first one, you can do the second one. All right, so uh, there we go. That's uh, that's the first thing I wanted. First and second things, I guess, I wanted to show you. Okay, let me uh, make some space here, and I will show you uh, something else familiar. Okay, well, what if you have something kind of uh, uh, unhappy looking like this fourth power of cinch, okay? Now, a minute ago I said, you know, something else familiar. Okay, maybe it doesn't look familiar yet, but by the time I'm done, I, th I think you'll recognize this procedure. Okay, so what we do here is we recognize this as the square of a square. That's what a fourth power is, right? Okay, so on that inside square, we are going to use that same double argument identity that we did before, okay? And then we just have to square that out. Okay, so squaring the one half is one fourth. I can bring that outside the integral. Okay, and then we can just use our, our good old formula for a binomial square, except we're applying it to this 
cosh 2x minus 1 binomial. Okay, all right, now we have that. Now this last term, 1, we can integrate. Okay, the cosh 2x we can integrate. Now what about cosh squared of 2x? Well, that's the same kind of thing that we, that we had to worry about on the previous screen, except we just have an argument of 2x. So cosh squared of 2x is going to equal 1 half cosh. Now I have to double that angle, so double 2x is 4x. Okay, so I'm going to get 1 fourth integral, and then 1 half parentheses cosh 4x plus 1, close parentheses, and then the rest stays. Okay, maybe a little bit of simplifying we can do here. So 1 fourth uh, integral. Okay, I'm going to have a 1 half cosh 4x. Now when I distribute this 1 half in, I'm going to get a 1 half there, and then plus that 1 at the end. Okay, so that's going to become 3 halves. I'm going to still going to have the minus 2 cosh 2x in the middle. Okay, now it looks like we can uh, we can integrate all of these terms. Okay, so my antiderivative of cosh 4x is cinch 4x, but I have to divide by that 4. Okay, so I get a 1 8 there. Okay, antiderivative of cosh 2x is 1 half cinch 2x, but I'm dividing by 2, so that 2 goes away, and then I get plus 3 halves x. Okay, so distributing that 1 fourth through there, I get 1 over 32 cinch 4x minus 1 fourth cinch 2x plus 3 eighths x. Okay, and then plus a constant, or maybe you have limits on this integration that, that you need to plug in uh, to evaluate a definite integral. Okay, so this really goes, this really works for any even power here. So this could have been like cinch fourth power cosh to the sixth power. Um, now it, it becomes tedious to expand out these binomials, you know, this, this sort of substitution is like a plus or minus depending on whether it's a, a cosh squared or a um, cinch squared that we're, we're trying to get rid of. Okay, uh, but, but uh, you know, tedious is, is what we have to deal with sometimes, but at least we can do the integration. Okay, all right, stay tuned. Let me create some more space here and I'll uh, show you a couple more things. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, this one. Now this sort of integration probably looks pretty familiar to you. Uh, I, th I think it's probably worth betting if, uh, once again, if you're watching this video, you've probably learned how to do this integral um, in, in like a, a I mean, I'd say in, in the USA, probably a Calc 2 class is, is where we do this. All right, and uh, so let me just remind you of, of how we would do this, uh, you know, kind of the standard way. And I'll, I'll run through that kind of quickly because uh, I, I think you've probably seen it before. Okay, this kind of calls for a tangent substitution. Okay, I, I, that is a trig substitution, uh, and that, that substitution is uh, x equals tan theta. Okay, in that case, dx equals secant squared theta, d theta. Okay. All right, and the reason that we use this substitution, the reason that it works, is that 1 plus tangent theta is equal to secant theta. I'm sorry, secant squared theta. All right, then we take the square root of that, and we, maybe we get rid of the radical that way, okay? So we're going to have secant squared theta, d theta up top, just a secant theta on the bottom. So we have the job of integrating secant theta d theta. Okay. All right, now I'm going to count on you having seen this before, but this antiderivative is the natural log, absolute value, secant theta plus tan theta. Okay. All right, then what we want to do is we want to place this back in terms of uh, the original variable x. 
Okay, well the tangent theta part is x from our substitution. And then if tangent theta equals x, secant theta is equal to the square root of x squared plus one. Okay, now uh, maybe you can convince yourselves out there that um, we don't actually need the absolute values here. Okay, uh, because once we put it back in terms of the x's, then uh, that argument can only be positive, even for negative x's. Okay, and if you take a look at the original integration here, uh, this integrand, one over that, that's always positive anyway, isn't it? Okay, so I think we're good. All right, so that's that's a review of of uh, what you have uh, learned before. Okay, but let me show you a way of doing this with hyperbolic functions. Okay, so instead of uh, making our substitution x equals tangent theta, okay, let me choose x equals hyperbolic sine of u. Okay, if you want to, you can call it theta, but you know it's not really an angle. You know, you can't really draw it uh, that way. Um, so I'll use u. In that case, dx equals cosh u du. All right, so our integral becomes, okay, integral. Okay, upstairs, I'm gonna have cosh u du. Okay, downstairs, inside the root, it's gonna be one plus cinch squared u. Okay, now um, once again, you may recall from, um, if you know a little bit about hyperbolic functions, or if you've watched, uh, say, my first video on hyperbolic functions, that one plus cinch u is the same thing as cosh squared u. Okay, so when we take the square root of cosh squared, we get cosh. Okay, so very nicely, we have a cosh canceling with a cosh, and we just get the integral of du, which is equal to u. Okay, it's a messy u, let me rewrite that there, u. All right, and then we wanna put this back in terms of our original variable, okay? So if x equals cinch u, that means u is going to equal inverse cinch of x. Okay, all right, uh, plus a constant, okay? So I've got uh, two different options for this um, antiderivative, this integral. So you might say, well, what's it equal to? Is, is the antiderivative of one over root one plus x squared equal to this natural log function or is it equal to this inverse cinch function? Uh, and the answer is yes. It's, it's equal to both of them, and the reason it works is that inverse hyperbolic sine actually equals this log function. Okay, my second video in the series on hyperbolic functions, we talked about inverses of hyperbolic functions in terms of, uh, well, it turns out logarithms, because the, the, the hyperbolic functions are defined in terms of exponentials, yeah, that kind of means their inverses are going to be defined in terms of logarithms. Okay, So you really do get the same thing, just kind of written a different way. Okay. There's something very interesting that comes about from this, and uh, I will let you fill in the details, but uh, an implication here is that the integration, the integral of secant theta d theta, can actually be rewritten as the inverse hyperbolic sine of tan theta. Okay, and honestly, from my standpoint, that's not something that I had uh, thought about too much until I started prepping for this video, uh, but I will leave it to you to kind of uh, see if, if you agree with that, if you can figure that out. Okay, from, from everything that I have on uh, the screen here, maybe a few other things if you need to. Okay, so sometimes uh, you get a little extra fruit from, the, from, from endeavors like this. Okay, all right, so I've got one more thing to show you here after this, and um, that'll be the last one for this video. Okay, last one now. Okay, now this integral uh, is, is actually even easier than the one I showed you a minute ago. All right, and it can be managed uh, with a u substitution. You know, kind of one of the first uh, 
you know, maybe non-trivial integration techniques you learn. Okay, let me let me show you that real quick here. So if we let u equal, say, x squared plus 1 or 1 plus x squared du equals uh, 2x dx, okay? Uh, so what we have here is integration. Okay, now the x dx in the numerator up here is really 1 half of du. Okay, otherwise, down here, I have the square root of u, okay, or one-half integral u to the negative one-half power du. Okay, we know how to integrate that, so I have one-half. Okay, I get u to the one-half power, okay, but I have to have a two there uh, as part of my chain rule, or sometimes I like to call it the anti-chain rule. We get some things to cancel out. And, and we just get u to the one half, or the square root of u. Okay, or back in terms of the original variable, we just get this root of uh, one plus x squared. Okay, all right. Now I, I doubt that's a big news flash for you. Okay, but just to just to kind of establish what what we have. Okay, but now let's try doing this using a hyperbolic substitution. Okay, all right, and uh, very similar to the last one. Okay, let's let uh, you, in fact, let's use a different uh, substitution here. Uh, let's, let's say x equals the cinch of, I'll call it w, okay? In that case, dx equals cosh w dw. Okay, so what we have here is the integration. Okay, numerator becomes cinch w times cosh w dw, that's the dx part. Okay, downstairs we have one plus cinch squared w inside the root. Okay, but I think we've remarked that um, one plus cinch squared is cosh squared w. Okay, so that means the root itself is going to be equal to cosh w. All right, so what we're left with here is the integration of cinch w dw. Well, we know what that is. That's cosh w. All right, now what we would like to do is express this in terms of the original variable x. Okay, and to do that, I'll, I'll just have uh, remind you that cosh w would use this in the midst of doing the integration is just equal to the square root of 1 plus cinch w. And cinch w was equal to x. Okay, so once again we get the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, uh, now I'm not showing you this because it's shorter or easier than, than the uh, regular u substitution, but just, just, just something different, you know, just something to help you think about something new maybe. Okay, all right, well I think that's all for now. Thanks for hanging out with me all the way until the end, and I uh, hope you appreciate uh, the, the many new things you're learning about hyperbolic functions. Maybe you can find some use for these in uh, you know, a calculus of differential equations, uh, physics or engineering course or something. Okay, um, I would really appreciate it if you uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, word of mouth is, is still okay in, in social media age. Uh, tell your friends. Uh, co-workers, professors, um, you know, parents, children, who, whoever, whoever you can, uh, help us grow the channel. And um, uh, I'm looking forward to doing uh, the next video in the hyperbolic functions series.